are here at IEEE Global Forum 2023 in Kuala Lumpur. And today I have with me Professor Won Jae Shin from Korea University in South Korea. And we have recently delivered a tutorial on non-terrestrial networks for global connectivity. Um, and the response was, was amazing from the audience. We had a number of, of questions, um, a variety of questions. And we would just like to uh, kind of talk about that and, and discuss with, with, with Won Jae uh, about how it went with our tutorial and what kind of um, what kind of response we got from the audience as well. So welcome, Wonji, first of all, uh, to, to, to this bit. Um, so I wanted to ask you a little bit about what was the syllabus of our tutorial. Um, so we did discuss about, let's say, how let's say NTN or non testing networks mm -hmm. uh, can be used for IoT applications and also what kind of role they can play in, in 5.5G standardization and 6G as well and recent releases coming up uh, from, from 3GPP. Um, so they, they, they have very high impact from, from NTN technology as such. Um, and also with the 6G framework that has been recently approved by IQR, um, so that also takes into account integration with many technologies and also ubiquitous connectivity as well, where, where NTN play a big role. Um, so first I wanted to ask, following all these points that I mentioned, that what was the syllabus of our tutorial that we presented, and, and basically we will also discuss about your part mm -hmm. in the tutorial and, and what you discussed, uh, what you shared with the audience. So if you would like to mention a few bits about that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so in, the, in this morning uh, we gave a tutorial on uh, for me, I have discussed about um, how to design um, some kind of multi-beam satellite communications to satisfy heterogeneous demands yeah, among uh, the different geolocations and time variations. So yeah, specifically there are several challenges to design a multi-beam satellite communications. So first one would be about um, the overloading system. So there are uh, large, very high level of the interference uh, between the uh, multi-beam satellite communication. So to deal with this, we have to come up with more like uh, uh, more robust and, and and flexible multiple access. Yeah. And also in the meantime, also we have to tackle um, another challenge regarding uh, channel state information is not very. Uh, Enough. For example, when you talk about um, the aerial satellite, uh, the, of, of course, uh, it, the, the speed of the aerial satellite is quite uh, quite fast. It's about twenty-seven kilometers per hour, so it uh, causes a lot, a very high, huge amount of Doppler shift. And also, by the time the satellite or gateway got the channel information, it's already uh, pretty outdated. So whatever implement technique you want to use, it's going to fail with an uh, outdated system. So, uh, so with this challenge, we have to come up with more robust and flexible multiple access. Uh, for example, uh, recently we are, are, are have a lot of uh, make an effort to uh, design of the RSMA, basically multiple access in the context of the satellite communications. Yes, I think that that sounds great. So I wanted to ask you about the basics of mm -hmm. splitting multiple access. Mm -hmm. um, so for, for the people who are starting in this mm -hmm. research area, mm -hmm. um, so, so what is the basic principle of, of using grid splitting multiple mm -hmm. access and how different it is mm -hmm. less with the conventional mm -hmm. non-orthogonal multiple access mm -hmm. or even orthogonal multiple mm -hmm. access and, and space mm -hmm. division multiple access. Mm -hmm. So how is it different from these and what are the basic principles Mm -hmm. of, of RSMA, if you could, you could explain quickly. So uh, what an RSMA uh, is, is, is the use of the split of the message at the transmitter side, so that uh, the, the each of the message is split into the two parts, the private common message. Right. So private information is one to decoded by its corresponding user, and while the common message want to be decoded all uh, the user in the network. So, so the, the key, Key thing is the use of the common message. We can uh, the design our multiple access more, much more robust in a interference limited network, or uh, even in the uh, absence of the purpose, as like I said. So right. Also, I, I would say this is the most generalized multiple access scheme because 
if you turn off some some of the uh, the common or private stream, uh, rate splitting can reduce to the power domain normal or even the SDMA, the space division multiple access, or even the multicast or orthogonal multiple access. So, yeah, by adjusting how much information you want to put in the common and private, it can, yeah, it can be, be the adaptable. Can, yeah, adaptable exactly, it can be adaptable for mm -hmm. any other uses of multiple access. And how about the usage of RSMA, let's say, into NTN? Mm -hmm. Um, into non yeah. networks when you mention the multicast and, and it's multi very, systems? It's a very uh, good question. So, the RSMA can be uh, applied to any kind of interference limited network. For example, in, in, in the context of the non terrestrial network, uh, kind of multi beam, kind of uh, multi beam satellite communications can be a very uh, good application and also multi layer. Uh, the satellite communication, for example, coexistent scenario between a GEO and ADU, because they have a lot of the uh, severe interference with each other. So we have to kind of come up with a new kind of joint design of the race splitting framework uh, to to handle the uh, the inter network interference or intra network interference between GEO and ADU. Also, in the meantime, we can also think of joint design of right. inter. Uh, integrate terrestrial and uh, satellite communication because they also have a lot of interference uh, because it's uh, the satellite typically has a very uh, at a very high altitude so it might have a, a generate very severe interference to a, a, a terrestrial user in, in a very uh, large area so yeah I think the interference management would be very uh, critical in, in uh, design of the integrated satellite. And I have a follow-up question on that because in, in, in um, 3GPT, mm -hmm. the RAND4 working group, mm -hmm. so there is, they're always looking for some sort of spectrum mm -hmm. harmonization exactly. of integrating NTN and Trestium mm -hmm. network mm -hmm. links, right? Mm -hmm. um, so this could be one of the solutions that how you um, mm -hmm. kind of manage mm -hmm. that's a spectrum mm -hmm. harmonization, first of all. Then another point is also on, on interference mm -hmm. sort of management mm -hmm. that is very important mm -hmm. because you're dealing with yeah. multiple users at the same time. Mm -hmm. For example, as you were mentioning, so LU satellite has wide coverage as mm -hmm. well, right? So mm -hmm. many, many users within that, mm -hmm. that, that yeah. um, area of coverage, let's mm -hmm. say. Um, so they have definitely quite huge amount of interference sure, sure. Uh, between multiple users yeah. that you're talking about. So if you implement RSMA, mm -hmm. so what kind of complexity uh, or sort of cost mm -hmm. as, as, as a bottleneck yeah. that we can think of? Yeah. Uh, do you have any, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. I think that also a very good point because uh, to kind of implement RS main and we're uh, the NTN communication, we have to uh, tackle kind of the complexity of the receiver side because RSMA typically rely on the successive interference cancellation of the common message before they uh, try to retrieve their private signal. So I think the SAC operation would be maybe a burden for kind of low capability, the uh, UE side. So for example, IoT devices does not uh, have a kind of a, a capability for implementing the SAC, which is non-linear uh, operation. Right. So in, in that case, maybe yeah, we have to think of more a low complexity or the same receiver. <coughs> Right, I think that makes uh, very well sense. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in other half of our tutorial, mm -hmm. um, so from multiple access approaches, we also went into sort of explaining like AI usage exactly. um, into, into LEO satellites mm -hmm. and also into flying platforms mm -hmm. like the UAVs, mm -hmm. your drones, mm -hmm. and, and then your popular balloons and so on. Um, so it can be the case that you have many complex mm -hmm. sort of algorithms, even though technically advanced, but quite complex sort of uh, solutions as well, so it really needs some time to see that are these commercially viable or not. After finishing our tutorial, some of the, the audience asks, um, what is um, so what is the relationship between 3GPP and, and, and conventional uh, uh, satellite yes. industry? Yes. For example, Starlink, they, uh, how, how they think of 3GPP and TN standards, yeah, yes. sure, like this. We, we recently did a panel as well, uh, just to kind of plug in um, here. Uh, so, so it was myself, you, and, and, and also Marco Di Renzo from Paris Satellite. 
Uh, so we did talk about how we can use, let's say, AI and uh, intelligent metasurfaces uh, into end to end. So how sustainable these solutions are, and how we can develop some sort of resilient network by using multiple simultaneous transmission reception resource or a minor or trying to explore some principles of electromagnetic information theory. So mm -hmm. we discussed that during during the panel as well and there was a lot of interest from the audience uh, into these topics. Um, so I think that's great. That's mm -hmm. good to chat with you, Gonje. Thanks for thanks for sharing your thoughts. Uh, and and uh, yeah so signing off from from Kuala Lumpur and hopefully we see you at ICC 2024. Um, with our tutorials, workshops, and many, you know, sort of activities, and uh, stay tuned. Thank you.